today's a fun day. We're going to wrap up the air assist system, the exhaust system, uh, get everything wired and do some first motion tests. So let's go. Thanks Sarah K channel for the comment about putting some rubber feet underneath my exhaust fan to reduce vibrations. I realize I have some in my junk drawer, so I'm going to take this apart and get these installed. I've got the fan reinstalled and you can see it's on some rubber dampers now. So that should be good. I have these two LED machine lights that I want to install on the sides. I think I want to put them up here, something like this, one on each side. Technically, I could use these mounting brackets to make it work, but I'd only be able to get one screw in. So why not? I'll just go ahead and make my own real quick. I come up with a quick design and fusion sheet metal tools and then export the flat pattern. Got some new mounting brackets made specifically for my needs so let me get these attached to the lights and we'll put them on the machine i managed to get both the light bars installed i have one up over here at a 45 degree angle and then on this side the other one so that should be a fair amount of light we'll see how it looks if we need to add any others later i've got this big stack of 16 gauge steel sheets here for the body panels i want to go ahead and cut out this first body panel right here so that we can install the touch screen the e-stop um, two USB ports and an Ethernet port. Um, that way we can get this all ready for wiring. I go ahead and lay out both front panels since they'll fit on the same sheet. Both of those panels look like they came out flawlessly. There's absolutely zero slag. Um, I use the same parameters I used for 14 gauge steel, so I probably could have went a bit quicker. But anyhow, um, I'm kind of in the same boat as I was for my tube cutting machine where it's just too cold for me to spray paint these outside right now. So uh, probably in a couple months, um, I'm going to have to remove all the panels off both these machines so I can paint them. Um, but for now, let's go ahead and get these installed. Let's start getting these components installed. Um, the touch screen is going to go right here. Um, it comes with some clips to hold it in place, but they're not really going to work with my setup, so I'm going to have to come up with something for that. I'll leave this out for right now so it doesn't fall out. E stop's going to go right here. Something like so. So the front's going to look something like this. I have a USB port for a flash drive, a USB port to, to a PC, and an Ethernet port. Um, I'll have to see if I have some button head screws so I can make these a little more low profile. I modeled up a clip design to attach the display that will mount to my 4040 extrusion and get that 3D printed. I got my touch screen mounted from behind with my 3D printed clamps. Let's plug in its cable so we can see what kind of reach we have. We're starting to get quite a mess of cables here. So I'm going to spin this around so we can start working on the electronics panel. I've been working on a layout for one of the back panels. Um, but first, you can see I've zip tied all these front panel cables and they run back here under the drag chain. And I figured out that the controller pretty much needs to mount right about here since that's the cable length of all these. I don't want to have to get do adapters and splice this and everything. So I think there'll be just enough room right there. Put a cable raceway above and below it. 
Um, so I think that's all I need to know for this panel. So I'm going to go ahead and get this one cut out and this attached. Here's the first panel layout. I triple checked my measurements, so hopefully everything fits first try. I was just test fitting this panel and it looks like everything's good. Let me just make sure the mounting holes line up to this. All right, that looks good. There we go. I have the first panel installed along with the controller and some raceway. I played around with some different options and I think I landed on something like this. Um, this space over here is where the uh, servo drives will be. And then I'll have probably a terminal block up here um, but for now, I know uh, all this is going to be here, so I'm going to go ahead and cut out the panel with the mounting holes for these. Um, if I need others, I can just drill them on the machine. Here's where I'm going to mount my servo drives. Um, their mounting holes happen to line up perfectly with the extrusion slots, um, so they should fit right there. All right, let me get this panel cut out. And here is the second panel layout. I test fit the panel on the machine and everything looks like it lines up. I was just checking to make sure all my mounting holes are aligned and they look good. So let's start getting this installed. All right, this panel's installed. So let's start mounting components. Power supply is installed. All right, I think we can install the servo drives now. We're moving right along. All of the servo drives are installed. I have all the electrical components all installed in the back here. I'm kind of making it up on the fly as per usual, but uh, I think I've accounted for everything that I want to do. I found that I had two more switches from an old machine that I want to use. One for a main on off switch and one to enable the laser source. So I think I'm going to go ahead and mount them right here. So I need to drill me a couple holes. The front switches are installed. So I guess there's nothing left to do but start wiring this up. I'm not gonna bore you with wiring footage, but um, it's coming right along. I've got all the 240 volt lines run, and now I'm gonna see if I can uh, shorten up some of these motor cables and clean up that mess. I have all my motor cables cleaned up. So next, I think I wanna wire up my front panel on off switch to the contactor so I can uh, power this up and make sure everything's working. The wiring is moving right along. I'm probably like 90% done. Let me turn on the controller. Um, you can see here when I release the e-stop, um, everything powers up. Um, yeah, the lights are working, the controller's wired up, all the limit switches are working, the fans wired up, uh, all the servos. Basically what I have left to do, wire the laser source into the controller, wire all three servo motors into the controller, then I have a relay there that's gonna power a solenoid for the air assist. I think that's pretty much it. Well, all the wiring's done, except for uh, wiring up the solenoid valve for the air assist, which uh, that should arrive tomorrow. Then I can wrap this up. So um, yeah, let's power it on and see if we can start configuring some parameters. You notice I removed the on off switch. I realized it's totally redundant because basically the e stop's doing the same thing. So I just took it out. It's not needed. Though, unfortunately, I'm left with a hole here. So I could potentially recut this panel if I have enough uh, extra material. But uh, for now, I'll probably just 3D print a plug, maybe print my logo on it or something. I don't know. The switch to enable the laser source is working great, and I'm really glad I have it now. I had no idea how loud having six fans on that thing was going to be. Let me show you. It's pretty loud. I have motion now.
I'm really enjoying using this touchscreen panel. It's so much faster to navigate than on my other machine. Like, uh, here are my motor settings. Um, to jog the machine. <laughs> Load files. Oh yeah, I forgot to show you the lifting table works too. It looks like the controller caps the jog speed at 400 millimeters a second. Uh, it should be able to go way faster than that. So let me set up a test file and we'll see how it performs at some higher speeds. I'm using Lightburn software to set up my files. I created a 300 by 300 millimeter square with a fill pattern so we can test the engraving speeds. I've been playing around with the speed and acceleration settings. It looks like the controller wants to max out at three meters a second uh, for top speed. Just for fun, I looked up some of the speed specs of some popular laser brands just to see where mine would fit in. And it looks like mine's gonna be pretty fast. Hopefully the RF tube can keep up with that engraving speed. So here's what this looks like. Here's the same file run on my current machine. It's max speed is 600 millimeters a second and you can see how much slower it is. My solenoid arrived, so let's go ahead and get this all hooked up and the air hose run and wired in, so we'll be all done with wiring. I came up with a design to mount the solenoid and the quick connector, um, so let's get those 3D printed. Wiring's done. I have the solenoid mounted here and wired up. I have the input line coming right here on the side. I think something like that should work pretty well. I was just testing out to make sure the air is working and it looks like it is. Let me show you. The last thing I want to do before we start playing with the beam path is finish up the exhaust system, which means I need to cut out this plate here so there's a place to mount the duct and also this body panel here so there's a place to hook up the duct to the output. After that, all the systems should be ready. We'll just need to uh, make the lid and the body panels. So let's go ahead and get those cut out. I'm gonna go ahead and cut out both top panels again since they'll fit on the same sheet. And I'll go ahead and cut out both the panels for the right side so those will be done. Got these two top back panels installed with my port so I can hook up the exhaust. Um, I'll show you here in a little bit why I decided to put that on the top. I designed a quick cover plate for the exhaust port. I could have integrated this into the metal panel but I thought it might be nice to be able to remove it in case I ever decide I want to exhaust it outside or something. I've got this side panel installed. You can see there my air assist hookup and I have the uh, fan exhaust port ready. So everything's in place now. We can uh, hook up the ductwork for the fan exhaust system. I've hooked up the fan ductwork. So it goes over here, round and up. It looks pretty good, except I think I need to 3D print a little guard. There we go. You can see I made a little 3D printed guard to keep the duct off the shaft. So I think we're ready to start playing with the laser source. This machine's coming together pretty quickly. Um, next time we're gonna install the mirrors and get the beam path all aligned. Um, so that should be fun. And hopefully we'll try to get it all enclosed so we can start doing some test cuts. Um, thank you to all my Patreon supporters for making this project possible. Thank you guys. Mm -hmm.